we're going to take two problems today. We're going to be solving and we're going to be solving and getting imaginary solutions. And that's totally fine. So here I'm going to have our directions are to solve. We're going to solve the same problem two ways. Actually, we're going to solve the same problem. Yeah, we're going to solve the same problem two ways. The first way, we're going to solve by factoring. So if I have x to the fourth equals 24 minus 5x squared. My first question for you, is this a quadratic? Is it a quadratic? Yes, no, maybe so. How many people say yes, this is a quadratic? How many people say no, it is not a quadratic? It's not a quadratic. What is an exponent on a quadratic equation? What's an exponent on a quadratic equation? Two. This degree is four. All right, this is not a quadratic equation. The reason I'm saying this is because we have to be able to recognize a quadratic equation because if it's not a quadratic equation, are you allowed to use the quadratic formula on it? No. If it's not a quadratic equation, you cannot use the quadratic formula. Can we factor? Sure, we can factor, but we can't use x equals negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We can't use that if it's not a quadratic. Is this a quadratic? No. Can we use that formula? No. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to try to factor this. So in order to factor this, I need to set it equal to 0, x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 24 equals 0. Can I use substitution if I wanted to to make it a quadratic? Yeah, do you think it's really necessary in a problem like this? I don't think so. We can split this up into since we're multiplying to x to the fourth, we can do x squared and x squared. So now I need factors of negative 24 that add to a positive 5. What are we dealing with here? Ryan? You got it. Positive 8 and a negative 3. And now we solve. So now we're going to get x squared plus 8 equals 0. x squared minus 3 equals 0. So now we're going to get x squared equals negative 8. What does this tell us? x squared equals negative 8. We're going to have an imaginary number. We're going to have imaginary number solution. We're going to root both sides. And now we're going to have x is equal to plus or minus, right? When you square root a number, you have to take plus or minus. We're going to pull out an i. And can I simplify root 8? Absolutely. So we're going to have x is equal to plus or minus 2i root 2. All right, next one. We have x squared equals 3. Square root both sides. x will equal plus or minus the root of 3. Going back to the original problem, I'm going to ask you, what was the degree of the equation? And do you know how to identify the degree of the equation? Chris? It is 4. How do we identify the degree of an equation? Good. You, the degree of the equation is the highest exponent. Our highest exponent is 4. So the degree of the equation tells us how many solutions we're going to have. So since this highest exponent was 4, this tells us we're going to have 4 solutions. Does it mean that they're all going to be real? It does not mean that they're all going to be real, but we will have 4 solutions. Let's see. x equals plus or minus 2i root 2. Those are two, solution, uh, those are two solutions right there. And x equals plus or minus root 3. That's another two solutions. So we ended up having two real solutions and two imaginary solutions. Okay, next one. I want us to solve this problem by completing the square. Solve by completing the square. So we have 2x squared plus 3x 
plus 3 equals 0. How many solutions should I have in this problem? Two. We should have two solutions in this problem because our, the degree of the equation is two. So remember, when we're completing the square, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move any number without a variable to the other side. So I'm going to have 2x squared plus 3x equals negative 3. I do not want to complete the square with a leading coefficient. Because we're solving, what can I do with that leading coefficient? divide it all out. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So now we're going to have x squared plus 3 halves x equals negative 3 halves. All right, now we go to the coefficient of our x term and we take half of it. So remember, we're going to do 3 halves times a half right? To, multiplying by half is the same as dividing by 2. What do we end up with? 3 over 4. Now, what do we do after we, have, after we take half of it? We now have to? You got it. Now, we're going to take that 3 fourths and we're going to square it, which gives us 9 sixteenths. And I'm going to add that to the left side, and I'm going to add that to the right side. All right, now we factor, so we're going to have x plus 3 fourths, that quantity squared, equals, I need to create a common denominator on the right side. So our common denominator is 16, so we're going to have um, negative 24 over 16 plus 9 over 16. <coughs> so we're going to have x plus 3 fourths, that quantity squared, equals negative 15 over 16. To undo a square, we will take the square root. The minute I take the square root, what do I have to account for? Good. So now we're going to have plus or minus the root of negative 15 over 4, since 16 is a perfect square. I'm sorry? Oh. I'm sorry, you're right. Um, instead of just putting that negative pack in, could I put an I out? Are you guys okay if I just pull that I out? All right, what do we have to do now? Subtract that three-fourths. So now we will have oops, x is equal to negative three-fourths plus or minus I root 15 over 4. There is a common denominator there, so we can just lump this all together. X is equal to negative 3 plus or minus I root 15 all over 4. How many answers is that? Two because of the plus or minus. Okay, next one. I'm taking that same problem. And I'm going to say solve by using the quadratic formula. Is this a quadratic equation? Yes. How do we know it's a quadratic equation? David. Not because it has A, B, and C. Because um, this had A, B, and C, and it wasn't a quadratic. You want to try again? Because it's an x squared. Because it has a degree of 2. I'm really drilling this into you because the next lesson or the lesson after that, at some point, it's not always going to have a degree of 2, and you won't be allowed to use the quadratic equation. So you have to recognize, or the quadratic formula, you have to recognize when you can use it versus when you cannot use it. Can we use the quadratic formula here? Yes. How do you know you can use the quadratic formula? 
when it's squared, when it has a degree of 2. All right, so let's go through. If you all remember, it tells us x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Our a is 2, our b is 3, our c is 3. Now we just plug in. So we're going to have x is equal to um, negative 3 plus or minus the root of 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 all over 2 times 2. Let's simplify this down. Negative 3 plus or minus the root of 9 minus 24 all over 4. So x will equal negative 3 plus or minus the root of negative 15 all over 4. What do I have to do with that root negative 15? Pull out an i. Same answer, right? Completing the square and using the quadratic formula. Okay, next one. Okay, question for you. Is this a quadratic? How many people say yes? How many people say no? It is a quadratic. What determines if something's a quadratic? It has a degree of 2. Since this is a quadratic, can we use the quadratic formula on it? Absolutely. So let's go ahead. Uh, we know x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. My a is 1. Our b is what? What do you think the b is? Negative 6i. You got it. That i is part of the b. Negative 6i. And our c is 8. So let's go and plug in. We're going to have x is equal to positive 6i plus or minus negative 6i squared minus 4 times 1 times 8 all over 2 times 1. All right, let's simplify. x is equal to 6i plus or minus the root of 36i squared. Isn't that just a negative 36? So I'm just going to write that in negative 36 minus 32 all over 2. Let's keep going. So now we have x is equal to 6i plus or minus the root of negative 68 all over 2. Can we simplify the root of negative 68? Yeah, we can. So we have x is equal to 6i plus or minus. Oops. Um, I could pull out an i and I can pull out a 2i, right? 2i root 17. Yeah. No? Yes? Yeah. All over 2. I can't leave it like this. Why can't I leave it like this? Good. What can we do? We can divide out a... <laughs> Two. When we divide out a 2, we get 3i plus or minus i root 17. Two answers. It was a degree of 2, so there we are. All right, you all try this one. Hold on, that should be an X there. Just keep scribbling out. Do you want me to do this with you or do you want to try this on your own? 
try it on your own. Can you use the quadratic formula? Yeah, you can. Answer for me. Who has an answer? Nobody? Simon. I got that. How many people got that? Then why are you all scared to share? Who wants to see me do it? Okay. Let's keep going. Um, try this one on your own. Okay, first thing I'm going to ask you, is this a quadratic? Yes, since it's a quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula. Piece of advice, though, don't do the quadratic with fractions. Don't do the quadratic with fractions. What can we do since this is an equation? What can we do? You got it. You can eliminate the denominator. I wouldn't work with fractions if you don't have to. The minute you have an equation, do you know an equation, meaning an equal sign, something after it, you no longer have to deal with fractions. You can eliminate the denominator. In this scenario, the common denominator would have been 6, so you just multiply everything by 6 to cancel out that denominator. That would be my advice to you.
If you eliminated the denominator, you should have multiplied everything by 6. When you multiplied everything by 6, you should have gotten 2x squared plus 9 equals 2 minus 6x. You want to move everything to the left side, and then you want to use the quadratic formula. All right, who has a solution for me? Who has a solution for me? Ariana? I got that. Anybody need to see me do this? We're good. David? Sure. David, did you get to this part 2x squared plus 6x plus 7? So you found your mistake? Yeah. Okay. Anybody want to see me do it? Okay. Find all solutions for x. Okay, so for number seven, I want to find all solutions for x. So I have x to the third equals negative 8. How do we know how many solutions an equation has? Guys, how do we know how many solutions an equation has? The degree. What's the degree of this? 3. So what does that mean? How many solutions should I have, Aaron? 3. So. If you go ahead, don't do this. If you go ahead and say, okay, well, this is x to the third equals negative eight. Let me just take the cubed root of both sides. If you take the cubed root of both sides, do you agree you're gonna get, um, you're gonna end up getting uh, negative two, right? Negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. How many solutions is that? Just one. How many solutions am I missing? Two. That's a problem. This would just get you one third of the points on the test. Okay, you don't want that. You don't want that. So how are we supposed to get all three solutions? What we're gonna do is we're going to make this equal to zero. So I'm gonna change this into x to the third plus eight equals zero. And now what have I just created on the left side? This is the sum of cubes. And when you have the sum of cubes, that means you have an a to the third plus b to the third, and we can factor that. That becomes an a plus b times an a squared, oh, not plus, minus a b plus b squared. So do we agree this is saying x raised to the third power plus 2 raised to the third power? So this is my a cubed plus b cubed. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. So now we factor. So we're going to have an a plus b. So we're at x plus 2 times 
a squared, which is x squared, plus a b, um, sorry, minus a b, which is going to be a 2x, plus b squared, which is plus 4, equals 0. Now can I solve? I could try. So now I'm going to have x plus 2 equals 0, so x gives us negative 2. We found that on our own, right? We were able to figure that out. But now it's the other two that we need to work on. So now we have x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. I cannot factor this. I cannot factor this. But can I still solve? Yeah. Is it a quadratic equation? Sure. If it's a quadratic equation, what can I use? The quadratic formula. So we're going to have x is equal to 2 plus or minus the root of 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4 all over 2. So we're going to have x is equal to 2 plus or minus the root of negative 12 all over 2. Keep going. We have x is equal to 2 plus or minus uh, 2i root 3 all over 2. Is that my final answer for that side? No. Can I divide by 2 everywhere? So we're going to have x is equal to 1 plus or minus i root 3. That's two answers. What was my other answer? x is equal to negative 2. These are my three answers. All right, you all try this one, and then we'll call it a day. How many solutions do I need here? Three. I need three solutions. Can I just take the cubed root of both sides? That will give you one of the three solutions, but then you're still missing two. All right, what do we get? Okay, Dylan. Say it one more time. Excellent. Who needs to see me do it? We're good? All right, we're done.